Using glass bottles for agar work as an alternative to petri dishes has a number of, of advantages and disadvantages and I wanted to run through a few of those. Um, I'll go through cleaning and filling and sterilizing and working with these bottles. This is a technique that's popular in Asia but I've seen very little about it on European or American YouTube so I thought it would be worth making a video. The bottles I use are 200ml flat glass bottles. I bought these off eBay really cheap. Uh, you could also ask an alcoholic relative to save some for you. Cleaning the bottles is just a, basically a process of getting out the old agar. Soak them in water and then I use a, a chopstick to just jam in there and move about and often the whole agar piece from before just comes out all in one piece. It can go straight into the organic recycling and then any bits that are kind of tougher and stuck on the bottle I get out using a, a bottle cleaner, sort of pipe cleaner thing. Bear in mind that they don't, the bottles don't have to be perfectly clean when you do this because you're going to sterilise them anyway. So obviously you want to get the pieces of agar and mycelium that's in there out, but you don't have to get them perfect. So then the next part of the process is filling them up with agar. This, here I am making an agar mix. I'm not going to explain in this video what my mix is. There's loads of videos on different mixes for agar. That's not what this is about. But yeah, here I'm just doing, making an agar mix and putting some food colouring in to make it a nice bright blue colour, which will have a nice contrast against the mycelium growing in it. So you have to figure out what volume of liquid will go in the bottle to make a nice wide surface area while not coming out of the neck of the bottle. For these bottles I found that 15ml is perfect, so here I'm just measuring out 15ml of the agar solution and putting it into each bottle. Obviously it might be a different amount of liquid if you use a bigger bottle. I have seen videos of people using much bigger bottles, like 500ml bottles. Um, the main thing is that the bottles have to be able to stand up inside your pressure cooker. So. Um, yeah, so that's a limiting factor. Right, so these are the full bottles and I've just stuffed a piece of cotton wool in the top of each one. Again, cotton wool is something that can go straight into the, onto your compost heap or into your bio-recycling. Um, so the nice thing about this technique is the only kind of waste product that you make is, uh, is organic and compostable. So here I'm just covering the tops of the bottles with some foil. This is to keep the steam in the in the pressure cooker from diluting the, the agar mix. I just keep the old foil pieces as they, they're easy enough to reuse. So then the next step is just putting them all into your pressure cooker. A couple of points about pressure cookers. One is that if, you d if you're just starting out and don't have a, a cooker yet, you kind of need one for doing mycology work. I definitely recommend asking around. They're definitely the sort of thing that people buy and then end up not using. So you might find you can get one without buying one. Uh, another thing is that this little slot here is a safety mechanism. This is designed so that if the cooker gets too much pressure in it, the seal will blow out and the pressure will be released out of this slot. So it's worth always making sure that this slot is faced away from you. So I just put a, about two centimetres of filtered water into the bottom of the pressure cooker. I use filtered water because it ends up with less kind of calcium deposits on the bottles, especially if you live in a hard water area and then load the bottles into the cooker, turn it up to high, and let the water come to a boil. 
put the lid on the cooker and seal it and let the pressure build up and turn the cooker down to low. Then I cook these for 45 minutes. That might be overkill. I know some people just cook agar for 15 minutes, but as it runs on low, it doesn't make a big difference in terms of how much electricity you're using. And you're certainly not gonna do the agar any harm by cooking it for longer. So after 45 minutes, turn the cooker off and wait for the pressure to go down. Then at that point, you have to carefully open the cooker. Make sure you're not doing this while there's, there's still high pressure in it. But you do need to do it while the bottles are still hot so the agar is still liquid. Then carefully get out each bottle. Obviously they're gonna be really hot at this stage. And lay them down on a towel so that they're horizontal. And that's it, leave them to cool down and a few hours later you've got your agar bottles ready to go. So I'm using these bottles here inside a still air box, which is just a plastic box with a couple of holes cut in the side for your arms. This is handy because it stops your breath from going onto the, onto the agar and also stops any spores or bacteria that are in the air or mold from contaminating your agar. So I wipe down the necks of all the bottles and the scalpel with isopropyl alcohol. Obviously all the work has to be done through the small neck of the bottle. I've found that this number 12 scalpel works well for this, it's got a kind of hook blade. And then here I'm just doing a transfer of some mycelium. So the hardest cuts to do are the sideways cuts. The lengthways cuts are a lot easier when you're trying to isolate a bit of the mycelium, trying to cut it out. So here I'm just cutting a little rectangle of mycelium out of the old agar, which I'm then gonna lift out of the bottle and carefully place into the new bottle. You'll notice that when I take the plug out of the new bottle, I don't put it down on any surface. I just hold it in my fingers until the transfer is complete and then put it back in to avoid any contamination. I've had really good rates of success with this technique. It's very rare that I get any of these plates contaminated. I didn't have anywhere near the same rate when I was working with Petri dishes. So that's it really. I think it's a pretty good technique. It's low tech, it's minimal waste, no single use plastics, low rate of contamination. On the downside, there's a bit more preparation. You have to do a lot, you have to do more cleaning and preparation of the plates. And you're limited slightly by the neck of the bottle in the accuracy of the work that you do. So yeah. Give it a try if you think it might be something for you or don't. Feel free to comment on this video with your thoughts on this technique. I'm learning lots all the time about this. I'd be happy to hear any feedback. Cheers.